I, I get a lot of questions about unified namespace and um, limiting access. And can you explain um, a little bit better the, the difference between the traditional automation stack, unified namespace, and how they interplay with one another? And so in this video, I'm gonna try and cover that, okay? So um, I'm gonna come to my table. I use this table analogy all the time, but you know, those of you who have been following any of the content, like this is probably what you're familiar with, right? You know, on the left-hand side here, we have a traditional automation stack that makes up these various domains. So, um, you know, here generally cloud, ERP, and probably half of MES is what's owned by IT and um, maybe half of MES, supervisor control data acquisition, are owned by OT, the operational technology. When we put the two of those together on one common infrastructure and one common strategy right here, when we unify those together, we get what is known as OT, IT convergence, right? On the left-hand side, the traditional model, if you watch any of our videos, the traditional model of you know industry three integration is essentially point to point like i f go find the data that i need for some specific function i send it to the thing that's going to do the function deterministically i either model it before i send it they model it when they consume it they run their function and we just forget it right there's no infrastructure that that goes to to interoperate with one another so say some function later some new function that we're developing needs that exact same, um, the same data that we engineered and moved deterministically from one place to another, well, you have to go retrieve it. You have to connect to it again. You have to collect it and you have to store it all over again for that new function. Unified namespace is about jumping that hoop. That's just one of the things. So on the right-hand side, what we try to, what we do is we take that infrastructure that we have on the left-hand side and, uh, and what we try to do is we make each of those layers of the stack, uh, you know, a node in an ecosystem where what we're doing is we're taking all data and information and we are publishing it into one infrastructure to be consumed by other nodes, including themselves. This is a process, right? Left to right from, you know, going from industry three to industry four is a process because most of the legacy infrastructure that you have doesn't support technology that allows you to do what's on the right. So if you are if your state is on the left, you not it isn't likely that you have your your infrastructure is designed to be able to do what's on the right. So part of what we do is we use tools like IoT platforms, we use data ops tools, we use gateways to take the legacy infrastructure and plug it into the infrastructure on the right. And then as OEMs are building new pieces of equipment or we're buying new pieces of software, we're making sure it meets our minimum technical requirements so it plugs into the thing on the right. And then what we do is we organize our data semantically in a way that makes sense, generally ISA 95 part two, because I don't have to teach someone where their data is, I have to teach them how we organize data and then they can go find it, what they're looking for. And then they can build information, create new data points, and then they publish it back into that infrastructure. Another fancy way of looking at it is right here. This is a prettier diagram. Thank you, G Galleris Solutions, for developing that one. All right. So that is unified namespace in a nutshell. And, and a unified namespace looks something like this. So if you, you know, enterprise site area line, and then we have an edge function, which has got our kept servers, and you know, we've got some data that we've created in feed counts, out feed counts, waste state for our process line, for our production line. Uh, we have some process variables in here, spindle speed, that kind of stuff. But it's all organized semantically. I, all I would have to do is just teach someone how we build functional namespaces. So a function would be something like MES or ERP, how we build informational namespaces, which would be like the 55001, that's ISO 55001. This is a functional namespace that I can use to, or an informative namespace where I can consume that and that that goes into a visualization or it goes into a report 
or it goes into a genealogy. That is an informational namespace. All I have to do is teach people how we build functions like MES, and then I have to teach people how we build information like 55001, and then I just have to tell them how things are organized, and then they can become a citizen developer and do it themselves. All right, so that's what a unified namespace looks like. And, and at the absolute highest level, we're looking at things like even our process control. So then the, the root namespace for a spark plug, which is what we're saying is how we are gonna handle process control between software and hardware. We're gonna use the spark plug specification to do that. I could even, our unified namespace even controls that. So when we, when we talk about how do we access that? Uh, what I try to do is try to explain to people two things. Number one, when someone says the unified namespace, one of the things that's very important to understand is that if my complete enterprise unified namespace is this green box, okay, this is a table, right? Imagine you're looking down on a table. The whole table is the unified namespace, okay? That is for the business. However, depending upon a unified namespace to me as an operator could be limited to just the place I have access to. So if I, I'm the node, the operator, or my workstation is my node, and I drop it onto the table inside of the red box, and my permissions are set so that I can only see the things in the red box, the, the data that originates here or has been pulled here to this node, to the, this area of the, of the business, then all I see is what's in red. Okay, and then even further, I may not, I may be only, maybe only to read. I may not be able to write everything in red. Also, conversely, I could put, I could put my red node inside of the yellow box, but still only be able to see red. Okay, I could, I could move my red node to the blue box of our infrastructure, and only see red. All right, I could also take a, a new node, a green node and drop it in the red area. That is the domain in, upon which I'm working. The place in the business and in the infrastructure where I live is in that red box. However, I have access to everything, everything in the namespace. I have literally, so an example of red would be line one. I might be limited to line one, but if I drop, if I have permission to green, then I have access to everything, all of the root nodes. Okay, so if I'm red, we might limit me to an area. We may limit me to a production line. That, that again, architecture dictates that, okay? But green is access to, to everything, the full unified namespace. So if I'm that green node, I can see the enterprise, digital transformation, and spark plug nodes, okay? So from inside the red. But this red only sees line one, okay? So I could put the green at the highest level inside our yellow here, and I could only see green. Green, which is everything. I could also, uh, let, me, uh, let, me, let me make a new one. And what we'll do is we'll say this one is yellow, and uh, we'll go ahead and, oh, wait, that's ugly. We'll go there, right? So now I'm a new node dropped on the table, in theory, I have access, to, I could potentially, with the right permissions, see everything, but I'm limited to yellow. And let's say in this case, yellow is just the stuff that's in the area. So I would be able to see line one, line two, and line three, or any, um, let me uh, take this area and copy it. And then what I'll do is I'll create a, uh, an OEE calculation for the area that is point, um, point 0.5, 50 percent. Okay, and we'll do a raw, we'll do a raw value. We'll publish that into the area. Okay, and so now what I would see is just line one, line two, line three, and OEE. But I would not be able to see anything below line one. Okay, my permission would be to not be able to see anything. So if I'm if I'm this yellow and my, I limit my yellow permission to just what's in the area, then all I'm seeing is enterprise site one area and then OEE point five and those three nodes. But I can't open the nodes and, and see down below them. Okay, all right. Um, and then I the last thing I could do is I could drop a node 
into the blue area that has permission to see yellow and blue, but it can't see red, right? So every node, you know, whether you want to call that a data, you want to call that a fabric or a mesh or whatever, I use the table analogy, every node has potentially access to everything, but we are limiting it through role-based management access control limits, and we could also do it physically, and that happens quite a bit, especially in this red area when you get down to the, the, the production lines themselves. We are limiting what it is people can see. However, that doesn't change the fact that they don't potentially have access to everything, and just through permission changes, whether it's a person or whether it's a software node, we treat, we treat people through operator interfaces and PLCs over networks as a node, as the same thing. They're no different. We don't treat them any differently, okay? Depending upon what my permissions are, I potentially have access to everything, but I only see what I have permission for.